Now let's talk about the longest vein in the human body. That is the great saphenous vein. Well, the name is great and the the course is also great. It's a long vein starting from the dorsum of the foot, and then ultimately we saw it in the femoral triangle. It was going through that cribriform fascia and draining into the femoral vein. So we'll just take the important relevant part of this vein here. For every major vein in the body, as I already said, that you should know first their formative tributary. Now just make it a rule that any time you're reading any vein, major vein. make sure you talk about their formation how they are formed so the formative tributaries the formative tributaries for the great saphenous vein one is the dorsal venous arch one we got this dorsal venous arch and number two we got medial marginal vein medial marginal I mean let me tell you about these formative tributary first and then we'll look into the rest of the part uh well guys let us imagine this here is a dorsum of the foot so there we go let's say this is the dorsum of the foot here uh there's a vein that you see running along the medial margin of the great toe here this is called as a medial marginal vein as the name suggests medial marginal vein and here we have a arch on the dorsum called as a dorsal venous arch look at that the name tells everything here if i go with these numbers only this is one we marked uh, number one we gave it as dorsal venous arch this is the one and this is number two that is a medial marginal vein and when these two vein unite they are the one giving rise to this great saphenous vein which is running on the medial side of foot on the medial side of ankle on the medial side of the leg and so on then keep on going above so this this is what vein that is a great saphenous vein let me write in short that is great saphenous vein formation is this in the popliteal fossa you saw the small saphenous vein also was there which was piercing the roof of the popliteal fossa if the question is asked how small saphenous vein is formed that is pretty simple as well small saphenous vein is formed by the lateral marginal vein along with the dorsal venous arch look at that and that's how the vein will ascend upward so this is going to be the small saphenous vein make sure you write the full form i'm writing ssv small saphenous vein which is by number 1 that is again dorsal venous arch and this time this vein here is the lateral marginal vein this is the lateral marginal vein so that is the first thing about the uh, the formation and our main concern here is the great saphenous vein just uh, just for the great saphenous vein is going to be the tributary of what femoral vein it is going to drain into the femoral vein whereas a small saphenous vein is going to drain into the popliteal vein this is going to drain into the popliteal vein well what we need to see here that great saphenous vein is once it start now guys we know that great saphenous vein graft is very uh, commonly taken we take uh, for the the bypass graft we take the internal thoracic artery or we take the radial artery or we take the great saphenous vein the great saphenous vein is a very commonly taken graft and uh, uh, that's why the surface marking of this becomes very important how to or where to find this great saphenous vein the beginning part and the close to the ankle only so what you'll see now because this picture is from the lateral side so pre presume that this is a medial medullus guys i'm putting a dotted line here just imagine it is a medial medullus that's on the other side of course there is a medial malleolus so where you will find great saphenous vein you will find it almost 1.25 cm in front of the medial medullus in front of the medial medullus i repeat again i'm putting a dotted uh, circle here because that is we're talking about on the other side on the medial side so on the medial medullus when you see and you compare this you will find the vein the great saphenous vein approximately is running 1.25 cm in front of the medial medullus in front it's not behind it's in front of the medial medullus so this is something about the formation and how it is how it starts now i mainly have to look into the great saphenous vein how it goes up drains and then what are the major perforators now that's the main question you you read about this and i'm sure in the orthopedics also that the perforators the perforators of the great saphenous vein they lie at what level so 
let me again put the schematic picture for this here we go guys this let us say is the cephanous opening which you know that is covered with what fascia that was a cribriform fascia on this and that is where the great cephanous vein is entering into it. I hope you remember the cephanous opening. We talked about the cephanous opening. It is present in the deep fascia or the facial art of the thigh. This vein, of course, we're talking about the, the great cephanous. I don't have to tell you the tributaries of the great cephanous vein in the upper part. You already know that. We have vein coming from three different directions. Superficial external pudendal, superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex iliac. So we already uh, done with that portion. Now let's, let's presume guys, this here is a knee joint region. That's a knee joint. And let's say this here is the ankle joint, ankle joint region. The one relation which I want to sh show in the beginning only here, the vein which was, the nerve which was running with the great cephanous vein all the way in the leg and foot, not in the thigh, in the leg and foot, that was the cephanous nerve. And the reason I'm making you mark this cephanous nerve, branch of femoral nerve again here, because when you take a graft of the great cephanous vein, they ask this question that which nerve is most likely to be injured. So obviously when you take a graft of great cephanous vein, the nerve running along with it is the cephanous nerve and cephanous nerve is a branch of the femoral nerve. So I, I've seen people usually get confused with the sural nerve. So it's not the sural nerve, it is the cephanous nerve which is running along with great cephanous vein. Perforatus, coming to the main point, perforatus. Now we have some perforatus via which the great cephanous vein communicates to a deeper vein inside. And if those perforators are not working, you know that the condition is called as a varicose vein. So we have a perforators at the ankle. We got perforators below the knee. We got perforator above the knee and we have perforator in the mid thigh or upper thigh, you can say. So there are particular name to these perforators and you should know their name. Like the perforator which is present at the ankle, usually there are three in number and we call them cockets perforators. These are the cockets perforator. Below knee perforator, this one, the below knee perforator, these are the, the Boyd's perforator. Boyd's perforator. Above knee, we got Dodd's perforator. Above knee perforator is a Dodd's perforator. And the perforator in the mid thigh is called as a mid thigh perforator or Hunterian perforator. That is Hunterian perforator. So you got to remember the names of these perforators and their location. So we got a Cockett's perforator, which is at the ankle, below knee Boyd, below knee we have Boyd, Boyd's perforator, below, B below, B Boyd's, Boyd's perforator is below knee. We got Dodd's perforator that is above the knee. And then we got a Hunterian perforator. Well, obviously that's a site for the Hunterian canal, the mid thigh region. So we got a Hunterian perforator in that region. So these are the perforators and the name for the great cephanous vein. You already know great cephanous vein. Once it goes through the cribriform fascia in the cephanous opening, it is ultimately going to drain into the, the femoral vein. So this is a little bit about the, the great cephanous vein.